Hi, my name is Tim Roger and a couple of years ago I was diagnosed with cervical dystonia. The reason I'm making this video is I found some treatments to, that have cured me of cervical dystonia. I wanted to wait, if you look at me right now, I'm not quite perfectly straight, but two years ago I was twisted so badly that I was on disability, I could only work part days, I had trouble driving, I couldn't function, I couldn't sleep, I was so badly twisted up. And the reason I'm not waiting until I'm 100% straight, which I will be soon, is because I want somebody to see this video sooner than later. I'm confident that there are many of you watching this that have cervical dystonia that don't have to live in pain anymore, and I want to share my story with you. Three years ago, almost three years ago to the day that I made this film, I decided that I need to get in a little bit better shape. And I, I had a couple of seven pound free weights. This is one of them. And I just was doing some stretches with them. I held them in my hands. I did stretches in and out and up and down and over my back and different things. And one of the stretches that I did, uh, I was lifting the weights up sideways this way. And I could feel it pull through my neck on both sides as I pulled my, but I thought, you know, this is the old adage, no pain, no gain. I need to pull through this. And I worked through this and fought. I did a number of repetitions and did these with it. And I remember the ones in the neck were really hard. They pulled all the way through here. Well, after only a few days of doing it, when I looked in the mirror, I noticed that it looked like my head was sitting on my right shoulder. It was way out of whack. And uh, a good friend of mine is a chiropractor. I was having breakfast with him. I said, Tom, I, I got to come see you. He said, what have you done? I lifted some weights. He said, oh, you've got a pinched nerve or something. We'll get you looked after. So I went to see Tom, and he got me, uh, gave me some adjustments, but it didn't make it any better. And I went to see him several times. The whole time I kept lifting weights and doing things for, for months and months and months. And uh, as time went on, I started to look good. My chest was flat, I had muscle tone, I was looking good, but my head was over on the right of my shoulder and I was twisted up so badly that I had to hold my neck straight like this to walk down the street. To eat, I had to hold my head up like this to put food in my mouth because otherwise my mouth, I would twist and food would fall out of my mouth. The back of my shoulders were locked up tightly all the time. I'd actually wake up in the morning and be, be pretty good. Things would feel pretty good. And I think, yeah, no, I think I'm fine today, I'm fine today. But once I started washing my hair, once I started to shave, once I started to move, I could look in the mirror, see my whole head start to twist hard, involuntarily twisting. And all the muscles in my back would lock right up tight. It eventually got to the point that I, I couldn't sleep at night. I was in so much pain. And I, the little bit of sleep I did get, uh, I'd be working till about 1, 2 in the afternoon and all of a sudden this, this fatigue would overcome me where I could, I said, I have to go home and lie down. I just was wiped out. Never this never happened to me before. I, I've been a relatively healthy person my whole life. Uh, my father was a chiropractor. He was one of the uh, very well-respected, well-known, very good chiropractor. I have friends that are chiropractors. My brother-in-law is a chiropractor. Uh, my whole world's full of chiropractic. So I spent time with chiropractors. and. Uh, this I was not getting any better. We were at a, an Easter dinner at my aunt's house and she asked me to mash the potatoes. I couldn't extend my arms and mash potatoes without being in pain. I had to hold myself on the counter and try to mash. I was in so much pain. And my brother-in-law, who's a chiropractor, came around the corner and he hadn't seen me for a few months. He said, what is wrong with you? And I said, oh, I twisted my back up and I, you know, it's a pinched nerve or something like that. And he said, well, come and see me. So now I was going to two chiropractors. And between them, we did uh, uh, spinal decompression, we did traction, we did ultrasound, we did chiropractic, we did acupuncture. They put needles in my back and the needles were bending going in. My back muscles were locked up so tightly. And when they could get them in, then they put electricity to them. And, and every once in a while we'd do some of these treatments, I'd get some temporary relief for a few hours for a day. But a day or two later, I'd get up and think, oh, I'm, I'm healed, things are good. And I'd start to twist up again osteopathy we did I went to another chiropractor that nobody even knows who, who did some some different type of work in Toronto I, I, I went up to see her and uh, she she couldn't get me straight either I get some temporary relief but after if I wasn't there all the time uh, I start to twist way back up and I was still far from good I was still in pain I still driving to look left to right I'd have to move my entire body not safe to drive so I'm just telling you these stories because I, I read and hear what people with cervical dystonia have. This is what I had. I had this constant pain all the time where things would just involuntarily lock up. And I, I looked like I was special needs walking down the street. Uh, just twisted up so badly, trying to get my passport photo taken. And they're, they're arguing with me the way I'm twisted up. And my photos just show my neck all twisted sideways. Uh, I, did, I did everything. Osteopathy. We did cupping. We did... Uh, I tried everything. And uh, finally, my 
one of my chiropractor friends said, you need to go to the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, and I'm from Canada, uh, so I, I they have a spinal institute there. He says, I don't know what's wrong with you. We tried everything. We I took six months of doing nothing, laying on the couch. Uh, I tried I tried yoga, everything. Finally, he said, go to the Cleveland Clinic. So I made I paid the money to go there. I went to Ohio to, the, to Cleveland, Ohio, to the Spinal Institute. I was an international visitor. People flying from all over the world to this. I had MRIs, CAT scans. I had everything with me. And uh, they took them and said, doctor, be with you shortly. Doctor walked in and he says, I looked at your MRI. He saw me standing in the office like this. He said, I saw your MRI. I look at you standing there. He says, you have cervical dystonia. I said, what cervical dystonia? He said, it's a condition, causes the neck to twist. He says, we don't know what causes it and there's no cure for it. He said, but you can manage it with Botox. He said, until your body builds up an immunity to Botox, then hopefully they'll come up with another treatment. But basically said, you're screwed. I said, okay, so I looked up, and that's all he did. We and we chatted for a little while, and, and uh, you know, very quickly, he just looked at me from across the room and said, you have cervical dystonia. I said, okay. So I looked up cervical dystonia, and I'll tell you, everything it said about it, I had. I had the twisting. I had the triggers that people talk about where you know, I put my hand on my side of my head and things would straighten out. Or when I took my hand away, it twisted up again. All the things that I read about uh, on, on the forums and discussion groups with people with cervical dystonia, I had. I had cervical dystonia. So I came back to Canada and I talked to my buddy Tom, the chiropractor. I said, I, I need a Botox guy. He said, guy in Burlington? He said, uh, go down and see him. He's got Botox. And I called his office and I said, listen, I'm coming in to see you. We're doing Botox the day I'm coming in. I need to get it in soon. I need to jump the line. We're not coming in for a consultation, screw around for a month and come back. Like I'm considering how I'm going to kill myself because I'm not living like this anymore. I'm in pain all the time and I'm not spending the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years living like this. So we're doing Botox when I come in there. Make sure you have it ready. I went down to see this doctor, a gentleman named Blair Lamb, Dr. Lamb, L-A-M-B, in Burlington, Ontario. And he does a number of things. Uh, he uh, was a, a young doctor and, and had uh, dove into a pool and hit his head somewhere and screwed himself up. And he has found some alternative treatments that he has, has practiced and helped to develop and now has some patents on different things, uh, mostly to help himself out. Now he's extended that to, to, uh, to treating other people. And Dr. Lamb talked to me for a while and I told him the story I've just told you folks. And he said, he, when I got to the part of the Cleveland Clinic, I said, the guy just looked at me and said, you have cervical dystonia? He said, he didn't examine you? I said, no. He says, you didn't take your shirt off or anything? I said, no. He said, kidding. He says, I see this. He says, I've had people go to the Cleveland Clinic, told they've had cervical dystonia, they've done everything you've done, have come around, and they come back here, and, and they, uh, I, I can help them. He says, I don't think you have cervical dystonia. He said, you might. He said, but most true dystonias have a repetitive motion. He said, so somebody's twisted up, but their head is always moving. Like that, all the time. Or they'll have a dystonia in their hand, or their hand is always moving. He said, but a cervical dystonia, he said, their head is, most of the time, a true dystonia is always moving. And I've seen people in my town that are like this, where they walk down the street and their head is moving all the time. He said, you don't have that. He said, I think there's something else going on. He said, I think you've knock something out of place, you pinched a nerve, you've done something. I said, well, that makes sense to me. I was lifting weights and blew something out, but the guy at Cleveland said, don't know what triggers it. You know, it could be something simple. It could be a car accident, it could be this and that, and that turns the, dysto the cervical dystonia on. And he says, I can give you Botox today if you want. And he said, but I think we should do some alternative treatments. So he sent me for some blood work. I came back a, a week or two later, and uh, he, he performed a technique called trigger point dry needling. And the dry needling, they take two inch spikes, uh, needles for lack of better terms. Um, it, it's like a very aggressive acupuncture. He says it's a cross between acupuncture, chiropractic, and surgery. And he took these needles and inserted them through my skin into the, right into the muscle. And what happens, he says, your muscle, i.e. the muscles in my back were locked up so tightly. I, I was walking around like this all day. They tightened up. I just I couldn't move. And they were like rocks. They said many of the acupuncture needles bent. They twisted because they wouldn't go in. So my back was locked up. been locked up for two years. So these, these uh, the dry needles go right into the muscle. He said the muscles are... Are, cause, have electricity in them when they're locked up together, when they're, they're contracted. He said the needle causes a release, takes the electricity out. I can often feel a shock from my, from my body go through, uh, through, go through my body when they release, but the muscle relaxed. And it hurt going in, but I'll tell you, the relief was incredible. And the first time he did dry needling on my back, my muscles never, in my back, 
and my shoulders never locked up ever again. They released and I, and I was fine. And the last one he did on one day, he put it into my, right about here in my neck. And I said, as it was weighing, I said, that's the spot when I was lifting the weights where I used to pull through, that's it. And bang, I could feel the release. And it wasn't perfect, but it took away a year of pain that I've been dealing with. And I went back for several uh, sessions of this dry needling, trigger point dry needling. He did it, he tried a few other therapies too, some little things. He did a little bit of Botox for me. He thought that might help out a few things and uh, a few other little things. But the main part was the, the trigger point dry needling. And when I was done the sessions, uh, I would feel quite relaxed, but after three, four weeks, things, I mean, it wasn't perfect. I was still twisted up quite a bit. I was twisted up to the point that people, strangers would still stop me on the street and say, what is wrong with you? So it wasn't quite perfect. And then after about a month after the treatment, I'd have to go back and I'd do it again. And I did this enough times where I'm thinking, I'm managing this, but I don't think we're going to cure this. And he's waiting for the day that something just went bang, was going to straighten up and uh, he said, there's something everybody's working on my neck. He said, there's a problem with your neck. Something's out of whack. Something's going to relax and we're going to twist it. It's going to, it's going to come around straight one day. They had me doing stretches and exercises and yoga to help things along. Lying my back and pulling my head sideways and stretching and things like that. But I was still, still far from perfect. I was able to go back to work quite a bit. I was able to sleep better, but I still was not where I was. And I was beyond the point of where I thought, I'm going to kill myself. I, I can manage this now. Uh, don't want to live like this forever, but I can manage it. And then, uh, just over a year ago, I kind of accidentally bumped into a person who asked me what was wrong with me. I was at a hockey tournament with my son, and I was all twisted up. It was one of the other fathers, and he told a story. He said when he was 12 years old, he hit the boards head on playing hockey. Hadn't been right since. Became a chiropractor, not to be a chiropractor, but to find out what was wrong with him to learn about his own body. Along the way, met people that practice a technique called advanced biostructural correction. That's advanced biostructural correction, ABC. And it's developed by a, a gentleman who was a chiropractor, was a chiropractor by trade in the United States. Uh, and it's a technique that's a little bit different. And he explained it to me, he says, they can tell you you've got uh, dystonia. I'm going to back up for a minute, guys, actually. Hold that thought right there. Uh, gentleman doing the dry needling for me, he said, true dystonia. He said, if you have a true dystonia, he said, if we put a needle into it and the muscle doesn't relax or we pull the needle out and it tightens right back up, he said, that's a true dystonia. He says, I'm putting needles into you. He said, you don't have a true dystonia. He said, and a lot of people are like that. So this chiropractor that, that met who, uh, let me jump ahead again here, he, uh, he said, you've had something go out of whack. He said, this should be very simple to fix. He says, and I don't care if people told you you've had dystonia, you've got this, you've done that. He said, what you've learned, haven't learned, that your dad was a chiropractor, everybody are chiropractors. He said, what's happened is you've had a vertebrae move forward. He said, people have, people, uh, the human bodies don't have muscles to keep vertebrae to pull them back into place. So if a vertebrae moves forward, nothing pulls it back into place and your body twists to compensate. I said, well, that makes a little bit of sense because I did this by lifting these weights and fighting through it. And he says, yeah, he said, you're probably on the verge of being out of whack anyways. You did that weight, moved it out of, out of place, and everything's twisted up here. Everybody's focusing on your neck. The problem's somewhere down in one of your vertebrae. He said, so, he said, and where chiropractic can't help you is your meninge, which is the muscle that runs from the base of your skull all the way down to your ass, shrouds your everything shrouds your vertebrae it's a huge muscle that runs around everything and it adheres to your vertebrae so the vertebrae is moved forward your body doesn't have muscles to, to naturally pull it back and but now the meninges is stuck to it so when a chiropractor adjusts it they can they can adjust you but it doesn't if it goes back into place it comes right back out because it's adhered to the meninge so one of this advanced biostructural corrections features one of their main techniques is the meningeal stretch where they they laid me on my back and and as i'm on my back they stretch me sideways to stretch the meningeo and i could feel the first time they did it remember i've been two years now twisted up like this and i could feel them when they pulled me it felt from my ankle all the way up to my skull this big stretch everything loosened and it hurt i'm not gonna lie about it it hurt because that muscle hadn't been stretched it'd been contracted for two years and they went bang and stretched it out one of the best pains I've ever had in my life. I, they, they held me down, stretched me, and I involuntarily swore, screamed like a little girl, and punched the doctor as, as I did it. And he said, we get punched a lot. I said, that's what my body has been telling me it needs, is a stretch like that. 
and they stretch it, that removes the adhesion from the vertebrae to the meninge, and then they work at adjusting the body, similar to chiropractic. And they told me this will take six to 12 months for you to get straight. And uh, I saw very slowly the results got better and better and better and better. It's still not perfect. I've gone for just over a year. And, uh, but I'll tell you guys, I can work like I did before. I can run. I couldn't run before. I can walk. I had trouble walking a block and I, I was sore. I'd have to go home and lie down. I can stay up all night. I can work. I can do stuff with my kids. Uh, I can live life perfectly. I can drive. I can do things. I get a tiny, tiny little bit of, of uh, inflammation in my neck because I'm still not perfect uh, when I've done a lot of work in a day but it certainly doesn't stop me from sleeping or stop me from working it's just some minor irritation and the the people that are practicing the ABC with me uh, or doing the treatments to me are confident that they're gonna get me straight they said you were straight before no reason you can't be straight since and even just in the last couple weeks I've seen I've seen greater improvement in, in myself and how I gauge it is the number of people that stop me on the street and say What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your neck? Oh my God, what happened? You've had strangers do that to me. If you're watching this, you probably had strangers do it to you. What's wrong with you? And uh, as I had this treatment done, the, the instances of people I know and or strangers coming up to me saying this, asking me about my neck, has diminished to the point that somebody stopped me on the street the other day who hasn't seen me in a long time, and they said, oh my God, you're straight. And I said, actually, if you look at me, I'm not quite perfect. I'm still a, a little skewed, but I'll be straight soon. They said, oh, my God, the last time I saw you, you were just twisted right up. So I wanted to share this, take some time. I, I've uh, written on, on uh, online before a little bit about this. I'm tired of typing it out over and over again. So I wanted to put a video together that I can share repeatedly, that you can share with other people. And where it comes down to is that a lot of people that have been told they have cervical dystonia don't have it. And it was suggested to me by the Dr. Lamb that once most uh, benefits covered Botox, everybody has cervical dystonia. He says the, the percentage of people that have a true dystonia is so small, very, very small, he said. But now the Botox is covered. You come in with a bad neck, you, you got cervical dystonia, here's Botox. He said that's where it's gone to. And I have a case of where it, it, that's not the case. I've been misdiagnosed. I also have a friend of mine, an acquaintance of mine. His wife works for my brother, the chiropractor. And he'd slipped and fallen on ice carrying Christmas presents a few years ago. Same thing, twisted up. Went out, cervical dystonia. I said, go see these guys. You know what? Doesn't have cervical dystonia. He was getting Botox treatments and they weren't doing anything for him. And he had this lifelong affliction. You're done. You're, you're screwed for life. You have cervical dystonia. And he did. This is somebody I, I knew in the small town of 8,000 people I live in. How many of you watching this can relate to what I've said? How many of you are twisted up, don't have the repetitive motions that go with most cervical dystonias? I can relate to the symptoms that I've had, the signs that I've had with, with the pain, and, and, and you've been told over and over and over again you have cervical dystonia, there's a good chance that you don't. I encourage you to look at the advanced biostructural correction. Uh, you can go to abcmiracles.com. That's abcmiracles, plural, abcmiracles.com. That tells you a little bit about what they do. You can also find a practitioner. There are only about three or 400 people in the world that practice this. I spend uh, about $55 a treatment. That's Canadian dollars that my guy, that's what they charge me a treatment to get this done. I go twice a week to do it. And I'll tell you, I don't know if I'd be alive right now if, if, I, if I hadn't found some of the therapies that I did. So I was told I have cervical dystonia. I was told my life is over. And uh, you know, I'm gonna start to manage this pain for the rest of my life when it turns out I didn't. And I know somebody else had the same thing. And I know there are a number of you that, that can get relief from this. So look at abcmiracles.com. Do yourself a favor, find a practitioner. Also, if, with muscles and things that are all tightened up, the, uh, I don't know that ABC can release it as quickly as the dry needling can, but the dry needling, Trader Point dry needling, did some amazing things for me too. And I've also done a little bit of research with the ABC and true dystonias, and they have got done a little bit of work with people who do have the true dystonia, with the repetitive motion that's involuntary, that just happens all the time, that they've been able to bring that around too and make it better in some cases. I, I think I've read that they've straightened it out. So if you have a true dystonia, you might want to look at ABC anyways. That's, uh, that's my story, and uh, I wish you folks all the best.